Hey, what's up guys? Rob here and I'm the Sci-Fi Horror Guy. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I've been tagged by Sean Urshan to do the ultimate Dracula tag. This sounds awesome. I just want to give props to you, Sean. This was a great idea. Um, there are 12 questions that have to do with Dracula as a character or Dracula films. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily need to be a Dracula film. It just has to involve Dracula somehow. Uh, which I think is really cool. But yeah, 12 questions. And I have to admit that I haven't seen every single Dracula film. Um, I've seen pretty much all the popular ones, uh, but, you know, like the Hammer ones, and then, the, of course, the 31 classic, uh, you know, 1979, even some of the crappy, you know, later versions of Dracula, you know, from the 2000s, like the earlier 2000s, like Dracula 2000, and then the Ascension, and Dracula 3, oh God. But, um, yeah, I've seen pretty much all the ones that are considered the best. Um, so, uh, this should be fairly simple. I do have some of the same answers as Sean, but some of them I actually went out on a limb, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to give my honest opinions. <clears throat> so, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ultimate Dracula tag. Question number one. What is your favorite Dracula film of all time? No question about this one. This was a no-brainer. The 1931 classic Dracula with Bela Lugosi. No question about this one. Uh, just a classic film that started it all. Honestly, when it comes to the Universal Monster uh, films, you know, I love this one. But my favorite Universal Monster has always been the creature from the Black Lagoon, the Gill Man. He's always been my favorite out of the, the monsters. But Dracula, man, there's just something about him. He's like the head honcho. He's the guy that puts everything together. Uh, he's the ultimate vampire lord. I just, I love it. You know, he's just awesome. So, um, Belagosi, he, he just does an incredible job, you know, in this movie. I mean, the part where, you know, where they're in the kind of like the dining area and the guy pricks his finger with one of those paper clips all of a sudden uh bell lugosi's like going towards him really slow because he sees blood then all of a sudden the crucifix falls down and he's like like this and he's like oh don't worry it was just a paper clip that cut me and he's you know that cruci that mini little crucifix falls on top of his finger and he's like oh crap <laughs> i mean this is just some great scenes but yeah, uh, the very first, you know, the original Dracula is just amazing. Question number two, who was the best actor to portray Van Helsing? Well, honestly, this was a tie for me between three people. Peter Cushing, of course, um, but also Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins uh, gives some of the best lines in this movie, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, I just think, you know, Anthony Hopkins, you know, he's, he's such a great actor to begin with. He was perfect for Van Helsing. But I'm also going to go out on a limb, like I said, and give this uh, as kind of an honorable mention, Hugh Jackman. Now, a lot of people crap on this film, Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman. I, I actually like this film. I actually think this is a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of energy to it, the great music. And Hugh Jackman, he just gives um, just an incredible performance. And he's got, so, like I said, he's got so much energy um, on screen. Uh, I just love the weapons and stuff. He's just uh, a force to be reckoned with. He really is. Uh, the Some of the C you know CGI in this movie is pretty bad. But I have to say, like, Hugh Jackman was the he was the the best part of this movie in my opinion so uh it's a tie for me between peter cushing anthony hopkins and um hugh jackman uh number three who was the best actor to portray dracula well again uh i could not pick um uh, they're just they're so unique every single one that i'm going to mention bella lugosi of course okay uh, Christopher Lee, 
I have to mention him. He is... They're, they're so unique in their own ways, it's almost hard to pick my... I can't, I can't pick, like, which one I like the most because they're just so unique and different in their own way, in a, in a good way. But also Frank Langella, a 1979 version. Uh, he was fantastic. I loved Frank Langella. So I would have to say between those three, again, another tie for me. I, I can't pick. I just, I cannot pick one. Um, so yeah, uh, question number four, what is your favorite weapon used against Dracula? <clears throat> well, there's been many weapons uh, towards Dracula and vampires in general, like, you know, wooden stakes, uh, you know, the crucifix, um, holy water, and then, um, you know, like sunlight, which was one of the, you know, which was the death of uh, Frank Langella's one in 1979 version. But I'd have to say the crucifix. Uh, I, I agree with Sean. The crucifix is probably, I would say that that's probably the most popular. Uh, so, because you could even make a crucifix out of anything. All you have to do is hold up, you know, two sticks like this and make a crucifix out of it. And there you go. And they did that in a lot of movies, you know, like from Dust Till Dawn uh, against the vampires. You know, he held a shotgun and a baseball bat into a crucifix and that kept the vampires away. So there's, there's, yeah, the crucifix is like the most popular um, weapon. <clears throat> Number five, what is the worst Dracula film of all time? <clears throat> Now, I, like, again, I haven't seen every single Dracula film, so there's probably some really bad stinkers out there. I know the one Sean mentioned was, was pretty bad, but <clears throat> I have to say Dracula 2000 sucked ass. I, I Gerard Butler, the only reason, you know, women liked that film because Gerard Butler, they thought he was hot, and, like, you know, he had his curly long hair with his abs showing, and, like, you know... It was like the sexiest thing at the time. That movie sucked. I'm sorry. It was just, it was all Hollywoodish, you know, uh, with with bad effects. And Dracula 2, The Ascension, was even worse. And Dracula 3, the earlier 2000 Dracula films, those three, they just suck. I mean, I think Dracula 2000 actually came to theaters, and then the other two came straight to DVD. So, <clears throat> which one is worse? I don't know. They're They're all bad. All those are bad. Number six. <clears throat> what is your favorite scene in a Dracula film? Well, uh, <clears throat> the one that kind of stands out to me, <clears throat> and I even thought it was creepy when I first saw it, it was in Bram Stoker's Dracula, where um, Dracula's brides are kind of confronting Anthony Hopkins as uh, Van Helsing. He has that torch and he's like, get away. And then Winona Ryder, <clears throat> you know, goes to bite him and like, um, he puts the, the patch on her head or, or whatever. And then the, the brides are, the, the, they're kind of creepy. Like, I always thought like the brides of Dracula are creepy. They were like even in the monster squad. Um, but that's a really kind of creepy scene. And it's definitely one of my favorites. Um, again, like Anthony Hopkins as Van Helsing, he's just awesome. Say whatever you want about this movie, though. I still think it's great. <clears throat> All right, uh, we're on to number seven. What is the best line from Dracula in film history? Uh, <clears throat> again, I haven't seen every Dracula film, like I said, but the one that stands out to me, of course, is from this movie again. And that's when Anthony Hopkins says, vampires do exist. He has the, the, the uh, strength of, of 20 men. And then he goes into this little like monologue of, of, like, um, of, of saying like what Dracula's powers are, you know, what he can turn into, and things like that. It's, I remember when I first saw that, um, it's kind of a creepy scene. I mean, they're sitting at the dinner table. You know, Anthony Hopkins and, and then Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder, they're sitting at the dinner table and he's he's like, you know, I, I know where the bastards, uh, I know where the bastard stays. And then he's like, and then Anthony Hopkins, he leans over, he's like, vampires do exist. You know, there's, there's something creepy about, about that line. It's just, you know, it, it kind of just makes me frightened of vampires. It really does. But yeah, in, from this movie, like, this movie has a lot of good stuff. Of course, there are some, you know, classic lines in, in all of them. <clears throat> um, 
What is the best parody? This is question number eight. What is the best parody or comedy featuring Dracula? Well, I think these movies are a lot of fun, and my kids love them, for one thing. But my kids were introduced to this first, before I was. I just, you know, my wife showed my kids these films first, and then I started watching them with my kids. And I really like them. The Hotel Transylvania films. And I believe Adam Sandler plays the voice of Count Dracula. You know, you have Hotel Transylvania 2. And then the newest installment, Hotel Transylvania 3. And I, you know, I think all three of those films are pretty fun and entertaining. Um, some laughs. But yeah. You know, I haven't seen, like I said, I haven't seen every single thing that has to do with Dracula, so I would pick the Hotel Transylvania films. Number nine, which film had the worst representation of Dracula on screen? That is no doubt Blade Trinity. Not only did this movie suck, but, but the portrayal of Dracula... What the hell were they doing? It's by that one guy. What's his name? Um, Dominic Purcell. He was in Prison Break. He's He's got a shaved head. He's just walking around acting like he's Dracula. What the... F like, this is, that's not Dracula. And then when he turns into the creature, he looks like a fucking rock monster. Like, what What the hell? He, he has, like, this big old thing on his head. And then his... He doesn't have, like, the classic fangs. Oh no, his mouth like opens, like really wide like this, like they do in Blade 2. They open like this, and that's how he bites people. That's not Dracula. What the hell is that? It's like a new breed. They ruined it. They could have had a great movie here with Blade with versus Dracula. They could have had something special here, but instead it's dog shit. That, that's, in my opinion, that's the worst <clears throat> representation or portrayal of Dracula on screen. That, um, that's my opinion. Blade Trinity. Number 10. Which film had the best death <clears throat> of Dracula? Well, um, I'm not, you know, I haven't seen everyone, like I said, but the one that stands out for me is Dracula 1979 with um, Frank Langella, where he, where they're on the, the ship, and that hook goes into his back and lifts him up through the deck where the sails are outside and the sun is burning him. And he's like, ah, and he's sitting there with the hook. The hook is in his back. It reminds me of Cobra. But the hook is in his back and he's struggling. The sun's right there. And his face just starts deteriorating. Like it starts burning and the skin is falling off. And then he's just like hanging limp. That was a really hard scene to watch. Like, uh, I remember I saw that at a pretty young age. I, I, I might, well... I don't know, I might have been 13, I think, when I first saw that. Um, I think it was even on TV, too. But, yeah, that, that scene you know, where the hook goes into his back, it's just it's crazy. Um, I thought that was a really cool death. Uh, let's see. Question number 11 is, what is the most underrated Dracula film? Now, this as a film is not... You know, a typical Dracula film, it's actually a monster film, and that is The Monster Squad. Now, you know, many people probably wouldn't call this underrated, but my thing is, I think the actor, or I think the portrayal of Dracula in this is underrated. Um, it was played by Duncan uh, Rigger. I, Rigor? Rigor? I think that's a Rigor. Uh, he, he played Dracula in this, and... I thought he did a fantastic job. The thing is, he had he you know he had the role down. He looked like him. He talked like him. Like just everything about him. He was the he was the leader. Um, I just I loved you know all the Universal monsters in this were great. All the portrayals, but Dracula was was awesome. And I think it's underrated. His portrayals underrated. You know when you talk about like dracula portrayals on screen no one ever t really talks about the monster squad dracula so that's what i'm mentioning here uh I'm not really the film is underrated because this is loved by many people i'm just talking about the actual uh portrayal of dracula dracula as a character is underrated 
Okay, uh, the last question, number 12, is on Bram Stoker's Dracula. It says, thoughts on Francis Ford Coppola's version of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Is it solid, faithful adaptation or an overblown Hollywood nonsense? <sighs> That's a hard one. Um, I would say a little bit of both, but I'm, I'm leaning toward a solid flick. Because it does have some good costume designs, it does have some good makeup effects, uh, sound effects and editing and stuff like that. It has all that stuff. The good cinematography, some of the best lines, and it's got an amazing cast. I mean, Keanu Reeves, Anthony Hopkins, Winona Ryder, Gary Oldman. I think Gary Oldman played a fantastic part. Um, but there is some Hollywood cheesy things that happen, but like I said, I think it leans more towards being just a solid Dracula flick. However, when you talk about overblown Hollywood nonsense, that is like Dracula 2000, Dracula Untold, <clears throat> which was supposed to start this dark universe. But then they're like, nah, let's, let's go with Tom Cruise and the Mummy. That's going to start the dark universe. Nah, that failed. Dracula Untold was just utter nonsense. It was all Hollywood-esque, you know... Hollywood hyped up just like Dracula 2000 with all the stupid CGI bullshit that they tried to push and then they even like you know changed the lore um, <clears throat> just things they did just made it all Hollywood they don't let's just get one thing straight in my opinion the last good Dracula film was Bram Stoker's Dracula I, I don't think they've even I don't think they've even come close to making a good Dracula film since then. I mean, it was 92. I just... <clears throat> I mean, that's just my opinion. I think this was the last good Dracula film. Uh, so, I would... Yeah, I would say it's a solid flick. There's been... You know, like I said, in the earlier 2000s, they came out with a bunch of Dracula stuff, and I just think it's just... They suck. They just really suck. Um, I mean, I give them credit that they tried. It's just... They didn't try hard enough. So I would say, like, as far as, like, overblown Hollywood nonsense, that would go to, like, Dracula 2000, Dracula Untold, that kind of stuff. So anyway, guys, um, those are my answers. Um, hope I answered them correctly. I did them to the best of my ability, and I was honest with every, you know, every answer that I gave. Uh, for this tag, I am not going to tag anybody. I'm just going to leave it open because Sean tagged you know the people that I probably would have tagged anyway so if you want to do a response please do so uh, like I said Sean Urshan the creator I just want to thank him once again for tagging me I really appreciate it I love these tag videos awesome awesome idea and um, yeah look forward to hearing you you know seeing your comments in the description tell me what you think and uh, I'll be back with more videos this is Rob sci-fi horror guy signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one